Good morning. Assalamu alaikum. Greetings from our Bangladesh team. Thank you for joining us for today's talk. It's going to be half term time for us too. We will be taking a three week Easter break and return again with more on 21st of April. Today's talk is rather special for me. Exactly a year ago, I was supposed to be in Bangladesh, exploring the unexplored and the unknown, eating all that amazing food. I had my visa and my flight tickets in my hand and my bags packed, but a little virus had other ideas for all of us all around the world. So let us all discover it together today. Bangladesh, it is bordered by five Indian states and Myanmar home to the largest marshy delta forest and also one of the longest sandy beaches. Travel through the lush green landscapes of the country to explore the beautiful mosques, the temples hidden away in different corners of the country, meet the indigenous tribes in the hill tracks and relax in the tea plantations. Watch the artisans at work or take a cruise to spot wildlife in the Sundarbans or hop onto a traditional rocket steamer in Dhaka. While still quite untouched by tourism, the options here are plenty and there is something for everyone, including cricket lovers. To take us on our virtual tour today, we have with us Saeed Riazul Haq, or Riaz as he's called. He was born and bred in Bangladesh and has been working for the tourism industry since 2006. With a master's degree in chemistry and a love for photography, Riaz got involved in coordinating and guiding biodiversity research groups in the Shundarbans and photography tours around the country. He has led many foreign media teams and assisted them in their documentary work on textile industry in Bangladesh, wildlife in the mangrove forests, and the livelihoods of the indigenous people in the hill districts and Shundarbans. As always, post Riaz's presentation, I will very quickly take you through our tours and then we'll have the question answers. So without taking too much of your time now, uh, I'll let Riaz speak. And now it's time for him to take center stage. Over to you, Riaz. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, everyone. Let's pitch up and be on you and hope we will be all safe for upcoming season and upcoming year. And this year will be good for us. So let's start with the Bangladesh. Welcome to my country. It's People's Republic of Bangladesh. Uh, this, this flag represents our country and the greenish beauty of this flag represents the greenish beauty of Bangladesh and the red disc inside is the rising sun for Bangladesh. Let's take a look about the map. Bangladesh is bordered with India, all three sides. We have a very a small border with Myanmar. It is only 271 kilometers long border, but we have a very co long coastline, around 600 kilometers long coastline in the southern edge. And it is the north end of Indian Ocean. Bangladesh is a country formed with Ganges Delta and Brahmaputra Delta system. Almost Bangladesh is a plain country to the sea level. Maximum elevation except this corner is a hilly area. We have 43 meters maximum elevation and one quarter of the country almost below two meters. So we are facing some threat from the climate change issues. And country is growing, developing with agriculture. So 60% people still depend on the agriculture in Bangladesh. But in this century, last two decades, we are developing with a lot of factories, clothing factories, jute factories, different steel mills and ship, ship building years, ship breaking years. So this is the map of Bangladesh. Bangladesh is one state country. This is the divisions. We have eight divisions. Dhaka is the, is the center. Dhaka is the capital division. And Chittagan is southeast, the business capital, and very famous for seaport. And we have Khulna division, Borisal in the south, where I was born. And Khulna is very famous for Sundarbans. And the Sundarbans is famous for mighty tiger. 
the Royal Bengal Tiger. And to the north, we have Rajshahi Division, Rangpur Division, Silla Division, famous for tea capital, and uh, the Moimon Singh Division. So Dhaka, Dhaka is the capital. Dhaka got its name from the Dhakeshwari temple. This temple was constructed very first time, 11th century during the Shena dynasty. Later period, it has changed and recently government declared this temple is a national temple. So this is well maintained and preserved. So people frequently visit there and we got our name for, from this temple. So, and Lalbagh Fort, UNESCO declared, it is the list of UNESCO to declare the world heritage. So Lalbagh Fort constructed during the Mughal period. This is the Pink Palace, so we call, it is known as Ahasan Monjil. So this building was constructed during English period when we were under English rule. So it was constructed around 1840 and this was the place for local kings and their residential accommodation and they they were the pioneers to develop Dhaka very first time 1901 they introduced electricity in Dhaka and they bring the system for river river reform system road reform system provide water supply and sanitation system in Dhaka and also they constructed very first time the health facility in Bangladesh. So this is the bustling river port. It was the very famous river port from 16th century. But in 1886, T.C. Buckland constructed a, construct a, an embankment to protect the Dhaka city from the river erosion and frequent flooding. So now this place is very famous with thousands of small boats and big boats. Other side of this river, there are a lot of factories, clothing factories and shipbuilding yards. Parliament building is the modern architecture in Bangladesh. So this was constructed between 19, 1960 to 1982. It was designed by Louis and it is one of the largest legislative building in the world. This is the paddle steamer. You can see the moving paddle steamer. It's very amazing to visit with a paddle steamer countryside in Bangladesh. So paddle steamer service started here in Bangladesh in 1920s. Very first time when it was cruising very fast, so people named it rocket. So it's still today it is known as rocket, people know. And during that period, even before the modern ships coming to Bangladesh, they used this paddle steamer for passenger service and other cargo services. This is the Karjan Hall. Lord Karjan was the vice star in India early, 20th century, he raised laid down the foundation stone for this building. It was supposed to be the administration center for newly constructed states in Bangladesh, but later they constructed, they changed their mind and it was started to use as a science faculty for Dhaka University. British architecture, the administration center, it was the administration center during the, during the British ruling time. And now it is used as a high court building. This is the old capital. I would like to take you the old capital to take a look at all those old buildings. This, this city constructed very first time early 12th century during the Chandra and Deva dynasty. Later, during the Muslim rule, it was the center for all Muslim kings here in Bangladesh. So now there are 52 buildings. And once it was the part of Silk Road. And this city was very famous for 
muslin thread they used to produce lot of muslin and fine thread in the world and sonargon is the main name sonargon means golden village it is believed that people saw something golden floating towards the city and later period it became the flourish center for business during 15 and 16th century and this is one of the famous famous house in sonargon the palace in sonargon and it was this family was very rich and influential for some hundred years and they maintained and control all the business there unesco world heritage sites we have in bangladesh three unesco world heritage sites in 1985 two sites were declared one is somapura mahabihara the buddhist monastery it was the buddhist university another 60 dom mosque and this is still very functioning mosque and people go visit there in 1997 unesco declared natural heritage the sundarbans the tiger land and also we have some more intangible cultural heritage shompura mahabihara the buddhist monastery during the pala dynasty 7th to 10th century it was very famous and very famous for practicing buddhism this was the university for practicing buddhism it is around 180 meters from north to east and 181 meters from east to south there are 177 cells for monks thousands of people visit, used to visit here for buddhism practice and all the total structure was covered with terracotta bricks you can take a look this terracotta bricks so it's still today there are some very old ruins and just next to this structure there is a site museum displays all the objects they got after excavations this is another view you can take a look of the view they have different places for shower they had well water so they used to collect water from the well and they have cooking cooking room and they have separate rooms for monks and support people south western part in bangladesh very famous for jute production jute is the fourth export items we export to abroad and still we produce a lot of jute there are many jute factories all those jute factories was established during english period and the khulna is commonly known as the gateway for sundarbans the largest mangrove forest in the world khulna is very famous for constant uh, building all those big cargo ships and we export lot of ships to abroad this is the sundarbans the map of bangladesh sundarbans so you can see th thousands of rivers water bodies here in sundarbans there are around 177 big rivers some of them are very mighty rivers and you can see the different color of vegetation it's it's depends on the vegetation density here is the most density and this the red side is less density and also there are around 106 tigers according to the last census in 2000 and uh, 2014 this uh, last time they use camera trapping say they believe it yield maximum accurate result for number of tigers the sundarbans this is the view for how it's building it's formed with sediment and silt all those coming from the upstream rivers sometimes from the himalayas and unesco declared this forest as a world heritage site in 1997 there are around 45 species of mammals and 35 species of reptiles 200 species of trees 200 420 species of fishes in the river and very there is a dolphin sanctuary we have four species of do dolphins in sundarbans this is the nipapam leaves 
we usually collect the slips to making the heart for a small houses in countryside area in uh, in bangladesh sundarbans there is no human habitation so the total forest is a desert forest and half of the forest recently declared as a wildlife sanctuary area so people can go and collect half collect products from half of the forest so some sort of activities we offer for the tourists and we, when we go for visiting and doing research on sundarbans we take this type of boats and go through narrow creeks try to see the forest from close and we have always armed guard and life jacket life boys for safety so this is the short view for some animals we see in sundarbans like saltwater crocodile it is one of the biggest crocodile and tiger is king there we have different type of deer spotted deer and barking deer dolphins is here <laughs> and the rhesus macaque and one of three otters in bangladesh living in sundarbans small colored otters and very old species like horseshoe crab living in sundarbans we have python there different type of snakes we have in sundarbans king cobra and this is monocle cobra leopard cat so we have a lot of animals to see in sundarbans and common birds sundarbans is very famous with the birds there are around 200 300 in recently is recorded 350 species of birds are here in sundarbans so we frequently see like 70 to 120 species in a short trip like three days trip this is the livelihood still 3.4 million people depend on sundarbans product so one group of people fishing with tamed otter they trained up the otter and take them to sundarbans to fish they put the net and water goes drive the fish towards the net so that's how they that's the technique they use and very interestingly this species of otter called smooth coated otter and it is believed that only this smooth coated otter surviving with this family very rare sighting in the forest and this man with uh, most of the people live uh, um, live on a small boat in sundarbans they catch fish and they go for two weeks sometimes three weeks with permission no one can enter the forest without permission so so these people are collecting nipa palm leaves and they sell in the market and one very interesting livelihood in sundarbans collecting honey so people go to the forest collect the wild honey so they get they, they fast they follow after the bees to get the honeycomb and when they get the honey hives they cut the honey part but they don't destroy the colonies of bees so this is the this is some pictures for cruisers we use in sundarbans this two cruisers we mostly use in uh, from october to march and they have all the facilities like life saving facilities and they always have arm arm guard and two gunmen actually allowed from the forest they are well maintained they have kitchen in this corner they have to separate cabins but common toilets with and also for shower they have fresh water not the salty water we use for shower they have the water tanks here they collect the water from nearby cities and they use for shower they are allowed to stay in the forest two days three nights so they stay we take this boat for a small groups and their cabin we can take a look in their cabin decoration 60 dome mosque this is one of the finest architecture south of himalayas it was constructed mid 15th century khanjan ali was the ruler he was under the sultans sultans was the ruler for bengal so khanjan ali was a local ruler he constructed this mosque it is 60 dome actually known as 60 dome they had originally 81 domes there are 60 pillars all those pillars are made of stone so it is believed that he got supernatural power to get all those stones to bring here and construct that that mosque so this is the shrine of khanjan ali this is the inner view, view of the mosque 
Putia Temple City. It is located south north western corner of Bangladesh, Rashai Division. This city has cluster of temples. This is the biggest Shiva temple in Bangladesh. So they, it is very active temple. People go and do or ship there. This is Govinda Temple. And we have cluster of temples like small Shiva temples and Govinda temples. All those temples are covered with terracotta bricks. You can take a look there, terracotta bricks. And this is the terracotta bricks, the beauty of terracotta bricks. It was constructed during 15th to 19th century. So Navaratra temple constructed in mid 17th century. It was very famous with the terracotta, but for the earthquake, 1897, it destroyed all the terracotta. Now it is under Bangladeshi, Bangladeshi archeological department. So they are taking care of this temple. Most beautiful temple in Bangladesh, it is considered uh, the Kanthuji temple. It was constructed, it took eight, 28 years to construct from 1702 to 1732. So it took such a long time to construct because of all those little tiny terracotta. It represents the history of two holy books, Ramayana and Mahabharata. In the month of November, they have a festival for this area in, during the Rash festival. The romance between Lord, Lord Radha and Krishna. Now I am taking you to my birthplace. I was born in South. So it is called Borisal. Borisal is very famous with river, canals, and rice. So there are a lot of floating markets. It would never thought that that can be a, that can people can come and visit and it can be a touristic product. It would never thought because it was in the countryside. It is very pristine beauty. People go sell their products. It is very common. Each day, different places in 50 square kilometer each day different places they have markets and they sell their products this time you can see the guava is selling but they have different products to sell all the year round they grow different product and they sell it here it is this type of selling almost like bartering system sometimes they ca come sell all of their products and buy new products for their family This is part of Miyabari Mosque, around 200 years old mosque. So it's very interesting to see it's very design. And when we go to visit that mosque, it's interesting to walk in the countryside and walk in the Madhya, I mean, Arden Road, not the metal road, unmetal road, and see the countryside meet with the people. And Shital Party, it was, it was known as a mat, actually. This mat known as Shital Party, it was constructed, it was, it took, women two weeks, sometimes three weeks to weave uh, a shital party, colorful mat. UNESCO declared that mat in 19, uh, nine, uh, 2016 as a uh, intangible heritage for humanity. So Northeast, Silet is very famous with the tea capitals and hundreds of tea gardens are here. 2000, uh, 1203, early 13th century, Khanjan Ali, Sorry, Harjo Shah Jalal came and visit here and established established this town and peace the Islam. So Islam started to coming from this area very first time in Bangladesh. So Bangladesh at present ninety percent people are Muslim, nine percent people are Hindus, one percent people from different communities. And we have in Silet, North Eastern Bangladesh. We have national resources like gas, oil, and coal. We collect a lot of timbers from Silet area. Recently, we have an industrial city growing in Silet. We have an international airport in this town. And there are a lot of, there are more than five national parks in Silet divisional area. This is the Lawashara National Park. It was declared as a national park in 1996. It is very famous for gibbons. There are a lot of primates. Around 246 species of birds are there. And this is the very famous trend line. You, might, you may heard the name of a movie, Around the World in 80 Days. 
it was filmed in this train line. It still is active train line. So there are a lot of ethnic communities, people living in Silet area. So part of this Monipuri weaving. So Monipuri community, they do their own weaving. Sometimes people go visit, buy their product, or even they go visit and see their products. It, and it is interesting. This is their traditional product. They wear it all. So now we are in south eastern side of Bangladesh, Chittagong, the second biggest city, business capital, and famous for shipbuilding yards and ship seaport. This is the Chandanpura Mosque. You can see the bird's eye view of Chandanpura Mosque. And this is very famous mosque in Chiragan. And this is the shrine where we frequently visit. Thousands of devotees come and they feed these turtles. There is a pond. In, in this big pond, there are hundreds of turtles. It's called soft shell turtles. And this is an endangered animal. This is only surviving in this pond. It has another name, Bostami turtle. In Chittagong, we have hilly areas. Chittagong hill tracks, we named it. There are three districts around 13,000 square kilometer. In three districts, we have 15 ethnic communities living here. They practice Buddhism. Some of the communities practice Buddhism. They are following the same Buddhism in Myanmar. So this is the golden temple. Um, this is this area in Bandorban. It is Marma dominant ethnic community. So they're living here. And in recently, they're getting education and proper support from Bangladesh government. This is the Cox's Bazar Beach, south of Chittagong, southeastern corner of Bangladesh. This is the longest, be one of the longest beach in the world. So this is 100. 21 kilometers long, un unbroken beast. This Cox Bazaar area is very famous with the fishing ports, and we have a lot of big fish markets. They have big building and uh, shipbuilding yards. There are many islands. So one of the islands is very famous, some old temples and Buddhist pagodas. It is called Moshkali Island. This is the hilly islands in Bangladesh. There are a lot of ethnic communities living here. One is Rakhine community. They have very colorful festival in the month of April, um, near the uh, just two days before the first day of Bangla New Year. So 12th, 13th of April, they celebrate with water festival. And we in Bangladesh celebrate 14th of April, 14th of April as the first day of Bangla New Year. And this is the sunset view. Cox Bazaar is one of the very, very famous places for sighting the sunset. And this, the different shape of boats, you can see these boats can ride with the waves perfectly. So they have different shape of boats, take it to the deep sea for fishing. They stay this type of boat six, seven to 10 days. Then the festival, we have many colorful festival in Bangladesh. We celebrate the national holidays. We celebrate religious festivals. We live in harmony. Bangladesh, we don't have any religious class and violence. We almost, we don't have any political problem in recent years. Last five years, we don't have any pro political problem in Bangladesh. So Eid festival, the biggest Muslim festival, we celebrate with the lunar eclipse. And in the Eid day after prayer, we embrace as a symbol of brotherhoodness. Durga Puja festival. Hindu community in Bangladesh, they celebrate that festival. They are, we have the national holidays for Durga Puja festival. Even a lot of Muslim people go visit Muslim and other community people go and visit their festival, um, their temples, participate in their festivals. This is the Bangla New Year ceremony, Mongol Shobhajatra. We call this procession. The, in the morning of first day of Bangla New Year, we have a very long procession. And UNESCO declared that procession as a intangible heritage for humanity in 2016. 
and UNESCO UNESCO mentioned that this type of procession purpose to celebrate and bring the good future for people. So we hope it will bring the safe and protected future for us for this year. We are going to celebrate it in next month, 14th of April. And the food variety. We have a lot of food variety in Bangladesh. Many people are vegetarian, but as a Muslim country, we have beef, chicken, mutton, all this food we have, all this meat item we, we take. And also uh, people like different type of fishes. Fish and rice is our staple food. Fish and rice is our staple food because we produce a lot of rice and we catch a lot of fishes from our water bodies. And sweet meat. We have a lot of cow farm and we have buffalo milk. We produce a lot of milk and people like sweet meats. A lot of different sweetness we produce throughout the country. You will find and meet with different items people will offer you. And the hilsha fish is our tradition, national fish and hilsha fish with rice. This is the traditional rice we call plow rice. People cook plow rice for the festival day and also when we have the guest for our home, we always cook, we always make this rice for our guests with hilsha fish. This is the yogurt, uh, this uh, sweet stuff we provide for the people after meat and it's very, very popular in Bangladesh. We have different type of yogurt like sweet yogurt and sour yogurt. Economy of Bangladesh after liberation 1971, we before we in 1947, we first separated from Indian subcontinent as East Pakistan. Then 1971, we got separated from Pakistan as Bangladesh. Now we are the Bangladeshi citizen and Bangladeshi economy is developing with government factories and jute factories with agriculture. We export a lot of items like frozen fish, clothing items, leather items, raw leather actually we export. And we export a lot of tea, jute, and some other shrimp we export to foreign countries. We import a lot. Most exporting countries to USA and European countries, but we import from China and India a lot of products. Like 50% of our business are involved with China and India in recent days. And recently, we are developing and constructing big roads and big breezes. One of the longest breeze supposed to be constructed in next year. It is over the Ganges River. It will be 6.5 kilometers long. And uh, this is the processing, the leather processing factories. We have a lot of leather processing factories and we process leather, we export it to Vietnam, Thailand, sometimes Singapore. And the fishing. People like to catch the hilsha fish because it's very popular and very tasty. But we, fish, we catch a lot of fish, river fish and sea fish. And the traditional weaving. Before modern clothing factories, we have the weaving, traditional weaving. We have different type of traditional weaving. Weaving is very popular in, in Bangladesh. As I told you about the muslin thread, we had muslin clothes. Later, jamdani we produce. And nokshikata is the different technique of weaving in the countryside. Women always weave different designs in, for their mm, dresses and cool mats. And this is the Jamdani. This is the legacy of Muslim. So in 2013, UNESCO declared this Jamdani weaving art as an intangible heritage. So this design, it takes some time for a sari is the traditional dress for Bangladeshi ladies. And it takes like two weeks to two months to, to weave a piece of sharis. This is like five meters long. And it is very famous for the traditional functions and traditional um, activities like wedding, 
wedding functions, people wear these sarees, and or big meetings, some political persons wear these sarees. And sometimes the most most expensive one it cost you two thousand US dollar. This is the another weaving Benaroshi. We have the different weaving factories, so they have the different design. They weave this dress for brides and bridegrooms. And transports for visiting Bangladesh, we have different options, but we use mostly the Toyota cars, and they have the different micro vans for different group size and tourist bus, luggage van. For traveling in Bangladesh, roads are quite good in this century. They constructed lots of 10 years, they constructed all the roads. The area we usually visit, roads are quite good. And after a certain time, we take a break for for sightseeing and also for tallest facilities. Visiting season, what is the best time? We always ask the European and cold country people to come and visit October to March because this is the best time. It's, it's like 20 to 29 degrees Celsius temperature from October to November. And in day night time, it falls down like maximum 18 degrees Celsius. So it's it's like comfortable, we believe, for you to travel and visit here. And December month, December to February, it goes down. Nighttime, like 12 degrees Celsius. Daytime, it 18 to 22 degrees Celsius. We don't have any snow in Bangladesh. We, it, it never snow falls here. But we have foggy sometime a bit. And we never suggest any night driving for tourists, for any visiting. Temperature goes down in the March, it's, it becomes 20 to 29. We have four seasons. So this, the winter season we consider from October to March. So all the tourists and any research people visiting or any visitor, we always sub suggest them to have some certain co course to follow because it's good to it's easy for tourists to meet with the local, to meet the local because local people allow to, local players, people always like to see the long trousers. Uh, they entering the mosque temples, always we ask local people, uh, always ask tourists and all, any visitor to take the shoes off. And he, female visitors always we request to have the head cover. And prayer time always we avoid the prayer time. Photography is very good. Bangladesh is a very good place for photography. You can take photo, you can come and take photo frequently. But for the some bearded person or religious person, like we request all the tourists and visitors to take the prior permission before taking photo. That's all. Thank you for your valuable time. Travel the unknown. Bangladesh, one important information I would like to share with you that Bangladesh, according to all travelers, Bangladesh is a new destination. Very few people visit Bangladesh. Only those people visit Bangladesh, they visit for business because Bangladesh is growing with business. But for a tourist, you have a lot of things to do and many different activities to do and travel, visit the locals and discover new cultural and heritage for you. Thank you very much. It was nice for your valuable time. Thank you for this wonderful introduction to your country, Riaz. And uh, you're very right, actually. It's still, tourism is still in its nascent stages in Bangladesh. And uh, it's known more for either cricket or for um, uh, business, like, you know, all the manufacturing and all there. But uh, yeah, we hope to put it on the tourist map soon. <laughs> so uh, let me share my screen now and um, share with our clients as to what we offer. Yes, please. So nothing as exciting as what uh, Riyaz showed us, but uh, going through our tours, um, it is a fairly new destination for us, as many of you may know. Uh, we've been running it for about three to four years only, and we are still in the process of adding more. Um, but to start, uh, we have our Essential Bangladesh tour, which is run, uh, offered as a group trip. We run two trips every year in October, as well as in February. And this 
covers a little bit of everything, taking you to the mangrove forests. Um, cruising also in Shundavans is uh, included, uh, overnight stay on the boat, in fact, two nights. And you get to visit the rural villages, the ancient temples. So it's a mix of everything. This can also be offered as a private tour and um, you can travel at any time um, on a private tour, not necessarily on these dates, but as Riaz mentioned, the summer and rainy months are best avoided. Bangladesh is also prone to cyclones, so that's why rainy months are definitely to be avoided, we would say. Uh, then we have a private tour, Hidden Bangladesh, which, as the name suggests, covers more of the off the beaten track uh, places here. You do get to visit the cities, but the focus is mainly on the remote villages, the backwaters, cruising and meeting up with the local tribes um, in various places. And here again, we recommend traveling during the um, season time, October to March. Uh, they are six hours ahead of GMT and there are no direct flights into Bangladesh. So you travel via India, Turkey or the Middle East. Visas, we recommend because if you uh, book a group trip or take the private tour with us, which includes uh, places like uh, Chittagong and Bandarban, we do recommend taking a visa in advance because you do require a permit to go to those places and the permit can only be applied for once you have the visa in hand. So we send a copy of your visa and by the time you arrive there, the permit is also ready for you. Um, if you're just doing a simple trip, visiting the uh, main places, the, the like uh, in and around Dhaka, then you could get a visa on arrival to there, but be prepared for the waiting time at the airport. Um, Bangladeshi Taka is the currency. They do have ATMs in cities. Currency can also be exchanged easily and credit cards are also accepted. And best times, as Riaz mentioned, are October to March. So now let's go on to the question answer round. Riaz, um, could you join me please again for the question answer round? And um, we have the first question for you. Uh, you did mention in Shundamons, we don't go um, into the forests or we don't go close to the shores. So is an armed guard required on those boats? Uh, it's uh, it's for, from the forest department for a, any safety, security, emergency period, who, those armed guard will help us always because they are from the forest department. So they always stay with us as a, as a traveler, we need support from the forest department. That's why forest provide the armed, tourist, armed guards, two of them, with each and every tourist group. Thank you. And I think as you had mentioned earlier, they just fire shots in case of any problems. They fire shots in the air just to scare the animals away. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not always common. It's a, actually sometimes they fire shots but they always stay with us and they are very helpful. They are not like the other like national guards are like, they are very friendly and they always show people, animals, and also they, they always stay with the tourists. They help the tourists. That's good. Thank you. Uh, could you tell us a bit more about the Dhaka muslin? Uh, is there anywhere yeah. it's still manufactured made in um, uh, Shanargao? Uh, no, nowhere is <laughs> no ad in Bangladesh. During the period of English rule, it was uh, stopped. And then no ad in Bangladesh, nobody is mm, weaving this. In instead of this, Jamdani is weaving. So we always take people to visit these houses. It's the same tradition, but a bit uh, harder trade than the Muslim. Right, thank you. Um, uh, what would you say about the roads in the country? How's the infrastructure? Uh, roads are developed over the years. Now it's quite good. So, and there are many roads with dividers for highways, especially I'm talking between the cities. So it's safe drive and we'll always our drivers follow the rules and it's quite safe to drive for not for our overnight journey, for day drive, always we suggest and we always go for the day drive. Thank you. Um, are there any heritage hotels there and um, what are they like? In, in, uh, we have heritage hotels in Silet and some resorts. We sometimes offer people to stay there. Okay. But otherwise, what are they like? In the smaller places, what are the hotels? Uh, uh, hotels, all the hotels, so they have the air conditions. They are neat and clean, what we offer for the tourists. 
and visitors, especially a lot of NGOs are working, so many foreigners frequently visit, and a lot of guest houses are there. They have basic facilities like hot water supply for the tourist standard hotels. They have hot water supply. They have air conditions and safety security, neat and clean. Thank you. And you gave another name for the soft shell turtle. Uh, it's Bostami turtle. It is it is Bostami turtle. Bostami so the, turtle. Thank yeah, Bostami. Only in the world they are surviving in this pond. Well, that's very good. They, so are, uh, they have only hundred individuals there, less than hundred individuals. Great. So they are protected that way at least. And they are protected after. that way. Yeah. Thank you. And. Um, then let's uh... i think somebody asked do you travel by road or plane uh, in some areas actually we travel by road then we take the domestic flight we have eight uh, domestic airports in bangladesh so we take the domestic flight for longer distance short distance we travel by road then people can see the countryside we can go for sightseeing they can meet people they can visit the touristic sites i mean archaeological sites and forests later for long distance like from Southwest to southeast, we take the connecting flights, Jossor to Dhaka, Dhaka to Chitagan. So separate areas, we take the flight. Sometimes we take the we travel by road. It depends on tourist interest. If they would like to travel by the whole journey road, we take the travel by road. Right. Okay. Thank you. It also depends on the time, I guess they have, and uh, time. You know, because yeah, road yeah. journeys yeah can take up longer too. Um, is it possible to visit the shipbuilding yards in Chittagong? Uh, it's um, recently it, it's difficult to confirm. Sometimes it's possible because I visited many times with even photographers. They don't allow to take photo, but I visited. I con I convinced them to visit there, but it's not frequently. It's not possible to visit. Sometimes it's possible. They allow. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they don't allow. If they think we are in a group of journalists, they don't allow. Okay. <laughs> right. So they don't want to let out their secrets. <laughs> uh, somebody asked, can we get visas online? Uh, visas on arrival visa is possible in Bangladesh. And also uh, they can go and visit our consul uh, consulate. Yes, but it would be recommended in advance if you're visiting places uh, which require permits, isn't it? Because right. then you can apply for the permit before the clients arrive there. Right. Right. What are the trains like? We take some train journey for not for a long overnight journey. We take some short journeys if they are interested. Trains are developing, but it's still only the train service between Dhaka, Chittagang are up to the mark we can take that journey, but always we don't take that journey because we take the flight or by road. There are a lot of interesting sites to visit in between. Even even the shipbuilding years, it's in between. But for the train, we sometimes sometime we take for the overnight journey between Dhaka and Chittagong. Other cities, if they are interested to the see the train journey, then we take them, but not always. It's not frequent that we visit by train always. Okay. And um, what would you say about trekking and all? Is that a possibility if somebody is interested in trekking, hiking? If trekking, hiking possible in the Silet area. We take the national parks. They can go for trekking, long hiking. And also we have different type of trips for island trips. Those people love to see the people's life style on islands. We take them different islands for long walking and hiking trip. Long walking trip. Right. But if somebody wants to do overnight, you provide camping facilities also? We have the camping facilities, so we can provide them camping facilities with free arrangement. Okay, thank you. And how has the country managed COVID? Uh, what is it like then? Um, Bangladesh government, already we, are, we started to taking the vaccines because we got vaccine very fast. So already more than 1 million people, already more than 2 million people already took the first jab. And COVID season, we were supposed, we were expected, we were actually, we were panicked that it would be very bad for Bangladesh because we are developed, people are not following, they are doing a lot of work, but it was not that bad condition anyway. It was developed and naturally we didn't, fall, not too many people got infected, but now in last two weeks, government 
again taking some sub, uh, steps to stop that all the travelers and also local travelers to stop the traveling in for the next two weeks it will be like that uh, stop but it didn't go very bad situation total number like 1 million people maximum 1 million people got infected and our total died not less than 5000 people died or because of covid in very fast recently daily death toll is very low it's only 10 to 12 people sometimes 20 but it's very low so government is taking steps all those precautions we are taking and a lot of NGOs are working on those issues. So they are taking a lot of precautions. And we are lucky that we, do, we, are, we are panicked that it would be, but we are safe. And now we are safe. We believe, we still believe we are safe. We are in a good condition. Well, that's good to know. Thank you. And what about snorkeling and diving possibilities? You've mentioned the islands. Are these the ones which are south of like I, uh, Chittagong and Coxsackie? Facilities in Cox Bazaar, yeah, uh, but not too too big a scale. We have to do it pre arrangement. They do it, but pre arrangement we arrange. So those people are interested. We pre on notice. We let them know then diving is possible. Okay, but can they get the equipment and all there? Yes, they will get all the equipment. They have the group of people in Chitaga in Cox Bazaar. They have a club. They arrange all these facilities. We contact with the club or those. Interest, those people are interested. We mention their name and they provide the support. Thank you. And uh, how is it like for um, single female travelers traveling? Uh, Bangladesh is for, tra uh, for single traveling is safe with the guides. But for a single traveler, they can travel. But daytime, they have to avoid like in the dark time, they will not travel anywhere. With the guide, they can travel everywhere, but in the dark time, only single traveler, like those people live in, travel in a group, even we let them know, don't travel alone in the night time, in the dark time. At the daytime traveling is safe. Bangladesh is safe for day travel. Mm -hmm. And nighttime travel, like there will be a pickpocketer or something like that, not the big threat. There is no serious threat for this country for travelers. Great, thank you. And what is the security situation like in the hill tracks? Because the foreign office normally advises off and on, like, you know, they keep changing their advice, their advice caution. Uh, yeah, hill tracks, for those people are interested to visit hill tracks, for them, we need prior permission. For those travelers, we always ask them to take visa from the consulate or embassies. Because we show them when they get visa, they allow us yeah. to visit there and provide the armed guard if necessary and the area we are allowed to visit and we fre we frequently visit we don't need the armed guard and we have tourist police they sometimes come and visit with us okay but it's generally safe isn't it for it's generally safe it's believe because of uh, there are some ngos are working so they are they have a lot of travelers so ngo people from abroad from england or some other european countries so they come they travel alone so they had some bad experience that's why government don't want any bad experience for travelers that's why they provide to this it's not about that they are facing a lot of threat it's right they don't want to get any news about the bad experience <laughs> true i think and in most places like you know it's mostly internal within the communities and tourists are not affected by it uh, but of course, caution is always better, isn't it? Uh, that's why they provide all the support. And where are the most interesting uh, tribes, you would say? And uh, In Bangladesh, if you consider the whole country, I would say like in Chittagang, uh, Chittagang areas, hill tribes, like four or five tribes, we, uh, we frequently visit. Marma, Chakma, and also Kumi, though they have different lifestyle. Like some tribes live on the hilltop, some tribes live on the full the foothills. So they have the different lifestyle. It's very interesting. There is school sometimes possible to visit. We visit. Yeah. So they all and, and they always sometimes they will come, but they have their own language. Ninety-eight percent people speak in Bangla in Bangladesh, but two percent people they have their own language. 
so they are dialects in their dialects they speak so it's a bit different so they can't even talk with bangladeshi people fluently that's why they don't come they just keep observing the tourists they just follow the tourists they don't disturb tourists they don't do anything to tourists they just keep following or observing tourist activities like we go to visit them they see us that what we are doing why we are interested to visit them and this is all about the hilly areas but tourists are but some other ethnic communities living in silet areas they are very friendly they always welcome people they can speak bangla very fluently and they can even speak in english sometimes some of them so they are very welcoming in this part and in the north west bangladesh north east silet north west bangladesh there we have the aborigines so they always welcome people right good thank you is beer freely available around the country yes no no sorry beer is not sorry beer is not freely available in some big cities is available as a muslim country is not commonly commonly drink so only it's possible to get some big cities but what we do and suggest they can take they are allowed to drink there, there is a rules is like that visitor can drink in their way but not in the everywhere but for the locals they can't drink beer or any alcoholic drink right so but the hotels supply it hotels it? they it's safe hotels is safe in the car they can they can drink in the car no problem they can drink because sometimes we have the big ice box for japanese tourists for example we put big big ice box with ice so they drink in the car in the tourist bus they drink beer they drink alcohol so it's allowed people don't see them and they can buy from different cities and we have government shops they sometimes can buy from government shops okay that's good to know too so i think that's all the questions we have then um uh, thank you for answering all the you questions you're welcome and thank all the participants giving for their valuable time and thank you for having me well, thank you and uh so let's go on to the next slide before we finish this is uh, so that's our april event shown here we will stay close to home and um, take you to this incredible mediterranean island registration details for the next uh, event will be available closer to the dates and um, video recordings of all our previous talks can also be found on the events page a newsletter will be sent out once the registration link is set up so thank you all for joining us today and thank you riyaz for a very interesting tour of bangladesh we look forward to seeing you all in 3 weeks on our virtual tour of malta enjoy the rest of your day Happy Easter to all of you. Please take care and stay safe. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.